Hello and welcome again to another Flux tutorial, and today we will be speaking about integrating Flux with IP adapter. If you don't even know what that means, that's fine, because we'll be covering about what IP adapters are, setting it up in comfy UI, and prompting with relevant images. Let's get started. First off, what is IP adapter? IP adapter stands for Image Prompt Adapter, and it is a model that can provide good image-to-image -image generation capabilities. These are different types of IP adapters to capture styles, faces, and a lot more. But for Flux, there is only one IP adapter. And naturally, this can give better image-to-image -image capabilities. As always, you need to start flexing your brain muscles, because like anything with Comfy UI, the hardest part is setting up the workflow. First, visit the link in the description below, and you'll see some steps. Let's do this one by one. First, we need to visit this link, and you'll get a GitHub page. Hit this button right here, and you'll get a link. Now go to Comfy UI, Custom Nodes, and open a command prompt. There, type git clone and paste the link you copied. If you did it right, you should be able to get a folder like I have right here. Next, go inside it, and you see a setup.py file. Once again, open a command prompt in the same folder, type python setup.py, or if you have Python 3 installed in your system, then Python 3 setup.py. That runs the setup and installs everything. Now time to download the files. Go to the clip file link right here and select this model.safetensors. Download it. Now copy that to ComfyUI models clip vision like I've done right here. Next, go to the IP adapter link and download this flux IP adapter dot safe tensors file and put it in Comfy UI models X labs IP adapters like I've done right here. Next, you need to download their realism LoRa. Go to the link in the description, go to files and versions and download LoRa dot safe tensors and put that in Comfy UI models X labs LoRa. You can rename it to anything you want. Whew. That's the hard part done. Now, in the same Hugging Face page, you should be able to see the workflow file. Download it and drag and drop it to Comfy UI, and you should be able to get this. Now, load an image and make sure all the model files are selected correctly. If you followed my instructions, you should be able to do everything without a problem. In this top box right here, you should type your prompt. See how the line that goes from that connects to the conditioning node. And right down below, we get a similar box for negative prompt, and that goes to the negative underscore conditioning node. So that's where you put the negative prompt. Write a simple prompt and click on Q prompt to get the generation started. And there's our generation. Do you see how it has captured all the details? If I go to my original image, you can see she wears a white dress. Her hair color is blonde. There are people in the background, and there's a depth between the subject and the background. If I move to our output, our subject has blonde hair, wears a sleeveless white dress, and there are people in the background, and there is depth between the people and the subject. And remember how I added a prompt saying to add sunglasses? Well, there's our sunglasses added onto the image. A lot of people confuse IP adapter with inpainting, but inpainting means you paint over the subject, and IP adapter means you recreate the entire image from scratch while using our given image as a base image. To prove my point, let's reduce the strength. If I lower the value and generate again, now you can see our output has captured only few details of the base image. She's still wearing sunglasses, and the people and the background blur is still there. But her dress and hairstyle is completely different. As always, now that you've got a base workflow running, you can tweak the settings and adjust it according to what you want. Here are some results I got. For example, if I take a shot from the back for my original image and prompt for a cyberpunk setting, you can see we get a picture of a cyberpunk woman looking from the back. Now let me go right here and enable cropping. Cropping makes sure your subject will always be the focus. It is really good if your image resolution is different. You can mention the width and height as well as to disable to crop or crop the image from center. Let me also prompt a little bit more to tell the shot should be taken from the back, and also decrease the true GS value. Decreasing true GS is only good if your image doesn't give you a quality result, but let's do that to see what happens. I'm also going to increase image to image strength, which uses our base image some more. And there you go. You can see the output is now close, but doesn't match the cyberpunk setting we want. 
and since we reduced TrueGS, you can see a little decrease in quality. If I reset the values, you can see we get a quality result, which also resembles the image. If you feel like the details are too much, you can play with the IP adapter strength and get different results. So that's my Flux IP adapter tutorial. I hope you learned something, and if you did, please make sure to like and subscribe, since that helps me a lot. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.